Hi, my name is Georgia Lennon and I'm continuing on with our alphabet series for family law. This week we're talking about words starting with the letter G. I'm going to focus on one word in particular which is guardians. So I'm going to talk about guardians not in probably the usual sense that people know guardians as, which is generally guardians of children. Um, I'm actually going to talk about guardians that come to place um, during the course of legal proceedings. And in particular, obviously we're talking about family law in family law proceedings. So there are two types of guardians that can um, come into play in family law proceedings. Um, one is a case guardian. Those guardians come into place when you're involved in the Family Court of Australia proceedings, which are the more complex proceedings generally. And those guardians are governed by the family law rules. The second type of guardian is what's called a litigation guardian. And this guardian comes into play when you have proceedings in the Federal Circuit Court of Australia, and therefore you're governed by the Federal Circuit Court of Australia rules. Now, the difference between the two is not much. It's basically the same thing. It's purely that you have different rules for the different courts and therefore different names. So litigation guardian is often what they use in other jurisdictions as well. So I'll use the terms interchangeably, but essentially they mean the same thing. So when can a case guardian um, come, into, come into a matter? A case guardian can come into a matter at any stage and essentially their purpose is to assist either a child, but more probably usually someone with a disability. And it's not disability um, necessarily in a really restrictive view, it's actually quite broad. And in most often comes into play in terms of mental capacity actually. So it's when someone, for instance, cannot give their solicitor appropriate instructions in the matter, or they can't understand what's going on in the matter, or um, by virtue of having um, been involved in some medical incident or otherwise, they, um, for a period of time, perhaps cannot act in the matter and uh, in, to enable it to progress. So what can happen is someone can appoint themselves or they can be appointed by someone else to act as the case or litigation guardian on that person's behalf. And essentially, what the rules say is that that person can pretty much do everything that um, that person in their own capacity could have done. I've had a couple of matters where this has come into play and it's actually been really helpful in progressing the matter in that family law proceedings already go for a very long time. So you don't want anything such as, for example, some kind of mental incapacity or disability to slow it up further. So by someone stepping into that person's shoes, it allows it to proceed, which is a really fantastic way. So as I said before, they can basically do anything that that person could have done for themselves. Um, there are some rules as to who can do it, so you have to be an adult, you mustn't have any kind of vested interest in the matter, um, and you have to act on behalf of that person's best interests at all times, so that's kind of like a guardian from a um, other guardianship perspective as well, so you may have heard of enduring guardianships and things like that. Um, similarly there, um, you have to act in the best interests of that person and make decisions. Now importantly, you don't necessarily have to take, or you don't have to take instructions from that person, you make the final decision as that guardian. So it's a really interesting position to be in. Um, it can be quite stressful as well. So you have to have that person's best interests at heart and have to really think that what you're doing um, is going to help that person along, which no doubt it will. 